What up guys, my name's Hart. Today I'm going to be going over this pretty cool Wolverine build that I put together in Elden Ring. If you like doing bleed damage, getting health back on kills, doing life steal, stuff like that, then make sure you guys stick around and watch the whole video. I'm going to be going over where you can get all the talismans and the weapons to make this build work for you. Alright, so first things first, here's a look at my character. You obviously don't have to make your guy look like Wolverine, but I like messing around in the character creation. So this is what I came up with in just a couple of minutes. As far as the actual weapons that you're going to be using to make this work, you're going to be using the hook claws, and as you can see, I mean, they're pretty much the wolverine claws. I mean, that's exactly what they are. So you're going to be using these, you're going to be using a finger seal. Now, you're not going to be doing a lot of incantations, but you are going to be using a couple of incantations that are going to kind of complement the build, make it work a little bit better, but you're not going to be doing going crazy with doing all sorts of spells and stuff like that. Uh, you obviously, you can put on armor if you want to, if you don't really want to buy into the full Wolverine thing, if you want to have a little bit more resistance, then you don't have to go with just the pants, but I decided to do that just so, like I said, to get that more authentic feel to it. As far as the talismans you're going to use, you're going to be using the Blessed Dew Talisman, which is slowly going to restore your HP. The Taker's Cameo Talisman, which restores HP upon defeating enemies. The Winged Sword Insignia, which raises attack power with successive attacks. And then lastly is the Dragon Crest Shield Talisman, which will enormously boost your physical damage negation. Alright, so before I show you guys where you can get all the different items and put the build together, I want to show you guys how it kind of works in combat first. So, first thing you want to do is if you're going to be running into a group of enemies, if you know you're going to be fighting anybody, you want to first apply the Blood Flame Blade. Then you want to two-hand, so you have the claws on both hands. And you're going to run in and you're going to want to do a lot of light attacks. That's something you have to remember with bleed weapons. That doing heavy attacks is going to build up the bleed much slower than if you are doing light attacks. If you look there, my first two hits, I proc the bleed twice, doing 4,000 damage. So now this is on this is on New Game Plus 2, so this guy's got a lot more HP than he normally does. You can see I'm kind of just mowing through him right now. Only takes a few swings to proc the bleed and it's doing 2,000 or so damage each time. That's pretty good. He healed himself in the middle, so that's why it's taking so long. Another th cool thing about the Blood Flame Blade specifically is that since it's a flame, even if you're not specifically hitting the enemy at the time, it can proc the bleed because the guy is burning. So that's super cool, if you ask me. You see we got a little bit of HP back there. Another way to get HP back, we have the Bestial Vitality. This is going to regenerate HP uh, over time, over two minutes span, which is pretty cool. By the way, the Blood Flame Blade lasts for one minute only, so you're going to have to put that on a little bit more often than you would have to put on the Bestial Vitality. You can see the Bestial Vitality paired with the Dew Talisman. My HP is actually moving up pretty at a pretty noticeable rate. Now I kind of want to show you guys how the Lifesteal Fist, Ash of War, works on this weapon. So first I'm going to kill one of these guys because I want to show one-on-one -on -one what, it, what it'll look like. Alright, so now that I've killed one of those guys, I've taken a little bit of damage from them. I'm going to use a Lifesteal Fist after this. Lifesteal Fist. I mean, that brought back almost all of my HP. And then you combine that with the health you get. I mean, it's going to be useless because I'm already back at full HP. But the health you get from killing enemies from the Talisman, you're going to be getting back a lot of HP. And it really costs no mana at all. You can see I pretty much still have a majority of the mana left. Or the FP left, I should say. So that really makes this skill really cool. And it actually fits with the build uh, very well. Real quick, before I forget, guys, if you're enjoying the video, please leave me a like down below. And if you want to see more content in the future, don't forget to subscribe. I just started this channel. I'm trying to get my first few subscribers. Any help would be greatly appreciated. Thanks. All right, so we'll start out with the hook claws. You're going to want to go to the Stormvale cliffside, side of grace. And it's actually not too far. We're just going to have to run up here past a few enemies. run through this door. Dodge. Okay. Okay. Just keep on running. 
Go over here to the left. Don't go up the stairs. Stay on the ground next to it. Run along over here. And in this corner right back here, right here where I'm standing on this body, there will be an item, and that is going to be the hook claws. Okay, let's just, let's just fight these guys. Show off the build a little bit. So next you're going to want to get the Lifesteal Fist Ash of War to put on these hook claws so you can start getting back your HP pretty quickly. So if you go to the Astray from Kaled Highway North, side of Grace, once you spawn in you're going to turn around, run up here to the north, and just past this rock right here there is going to be a Scarab. Once you kill this Scarab it will drop you the Ash of War. All right, now the finger seal. To get the finger seal, you need to go to the round table hold. Now this seal is going to let you cast Blood Flame Blade and Beast Seal Vitality, so it's super important to the build. Just run over here to the Twin Maiden Husks. And here it is. Just 800 runes. It's not very expensive and super easy to get. To get the incantation Blood Flame Blade, you're going to need to go to Lyernia Lakes at the Rose Church, where I'm at right now. See you right here. You're going to want to run around to the northwest side of the island. And right over here, there will be a scarab down here in the water, right where I'm standing right now. If you kill this scarab, they will drop you the Blood Flame Blade. Getting Bestial Vitality is a super important part of this build, and thankfully it's not super hard. All you have to do is go to the Bestial Sanctum after D sends you here, and you'll speak to... The Beast Clergyman, he'll ask you to bring him Death Root. Once you bring him Death Root three separate times, then he will give you the Bestial Vitality Incantation as a reward. If you don't know where the Bestial Sanctum is on the map, it's all the way over here to the east side of Kaled, and you'll travel up north. And here it is. Alternatively, you can go to the Third Church of America, and right over here in the water, there will be a portal. And that portal will take you right to where I'm standing right now, in front of the Bestial Sanctum. Moving on to Talismans, the first one we're going to be getting is the Blessed Dew Talisman that's going to slowly restore our HP. If you come down here to the 4th Church of America in the Weeping Peninsula, up on our horse, oops, up on the horse, and we are going to ride south. Now, this... Talisman is actually in the Landell city capital, but there's a uh, there's a chest over here that'll actually teleport us almost directly next to where we need to be. It's gonna be right up here at the top of this hill. There's a tower. Once we climb to the top of the tower, uh, we'll find the chest. Fortunately, it is a bit of a run, but it shouldn't be too difficult. Here. No need to fight anybody. Run right to the ladder. Start climbing up. There is a chance I've had it happen where the there is a guy at the top on this uh, turret, and he can sometimes come down and meet you halfway up the up the ladder. But it's not that hard to take him, out. and then you open the chest. Here we are getting to it. Peace me up a little bit, though. And here we are in the Landell Royal Capital. Uh, all, all we have to do is run straight ahead. We'll go through this archway. We'll see this golem laying on the ground. Uh, don't worry about it. He's not going to... He will probably start attacking us after we get the talisman, but we can get to it first. It's going to be right over here in this chest. Open it up, and you'll have the Blessed Dew Talisman. To get the Winged Sword Insignia Talisman, we're going to be going to Lyernia of the Lakes. We're at the Lyernia Lakeshore side of Grace. You can see it's right here at the beginning of the area. <clears throat> Once you spawn in, we're going to turn around and head south. 
Now we're looking for a cave. There's a cave back here that we have to go through. Kill a bunch of enemies, fight a boss at the end. And then it will drop us the talisman. Now I've already fought the boss, so I'm just going to show you the entrance. But if you can see right here, there is a jellyfish. We run right past the jellyfish. We'll be at the entrance to the cave. Run down here. We'll find the site of grace. And see, that this is the Stillwater Cave. To get the Taker's Cameo Talisman that will restore our HP after defeating enemies, we have to go to the Volcano Manor. <clears throat> now, if you haven't already, after speaking to Lady Tanith, who is actually right over here, right there, after you speak to Lady Tanith, you're going to get a key. The key will open some doorways for you, but the main one that we're worried about is right here. Once you open this door for the first time, there will be an item here on the table. It'll be a letter from Volcano Manor. And this will be kind of like a quest for you to do. There'll be three different uh, quests for you to do. Actually, there's four, but after the third one, as a reward, we will get the talisman that we're looking for. Uh, these quests will be hunt down an NPC. Once you kill him, you come back, speak to Lady Tanis, and she gives you a reward. That'll be marked on the map. Uh, the locations of those enemies, so it's not super difficult to find them. All you have to do is hunt down the first three. Once you do that, the third reward will be the talisman that will restore our HP after we defeat enemies. Now, unfortunately, I haven't progressed my New Game Plus save far enough to where I have access to the Dragon Crest Great Shield Talisman. However, there's two important things with this. Number one is that this is the least important part of the build. Everything else kind of works together, increasing the bleed damage or giving you health back. This just kind of negates damage, and while that's nice, it's not really essential to the build at all. There's plenty of other options out there that I'm sure may, might even work better. So if you guys try some of those out and like them more than this talisman, let me know down in the comments so I can try it out myself. Uh, number two is while it's not great, I can show you the general area where you can find this tal talisman, and then you can go near there and then you can look up a different video to find out the exact location. But what I can do is tell you that it's in the Elfael Brace of the Halig Tree location. Um, if you go to the drainage channel side of Grace, it's nearby there. You travel across some branches and you will find this chest on top of a platform. Well, I know it's not the best description, uh, that's all I can do for you, and hopefully you guys are able to find that using another video help you understand As far as stat recommendations for this build I would say the three most important stats to focus on are going to be dexterity Endurance and vigor if you look at my stats uh, I've got my dexterity maxed out. I've got vigor at 50 and I have endurance at 32 Those are easily my three highest stats And while you may not be as high of a level when you're trying to do this Distributing your stats uh, among those things are going to be pretty important for this regardless. Uh, dexterity is going to increase your damage the most. Vigor I found to be pretty important since you're not wearing any armor. You're going to want to have a little bit more HP so you can suffer more hits still. And then endurance is going to be important because since you're using this weapon that's light and you want to do a lot of quick strikes to build up that bleed damage, having a little bit hi higher endurance uh, is going to help you out. And honestly, I wish I had mine a little bit higher. I might even take some off my Vigor and redistribute that into Endurance. Uh, other than that, the only two other things you have to focus on with the stats is that you need to have your Faith to level 12 so you can use Bestial Vitality. You need to have your Arcane at level 9 so you can use the Blood Flame Blade. That's going to be it for this Wolverine build video. If you liked what you saw, I do stream live on Twitch most weekdays. If you want to come check me out, twitch.tv slash fresh heart. That link will be down in the description. Thanks for watching, guys.